Howdy, it's Tubal Kane once again, and in the last video, numbers uh, 275 and 276, I showed you how to make a tool maker's clamp, and in this one I'm going to show you how to color it or blue it, and I'm going to give you two different methods, and uh, it just looks a little unfinished without being uh, blued or colored in some way, and it'll quickly rust, and I'm not so sure how quickly the... Uh, or how permanently the uh, the bluing will prevent rust, but you know rust happens. Is is but it'll look better. So let me show you my method of bluing it. And first, I'll show you what you need. Get yourself some Birchwood Casey Perma Blue, and there's variations of this in different colors. But this is probably the most common one. It's available at any sporting goods store. I think I got this at. Bass Pro Shop, and it's about 11 bucks, uh, even though it's only a dime's worth in there. But uh, be careful when using chemicals. Wear gloves. I'm going to wear gloves mainly so I don't get oil on the project, but my old skin can take this, these harsh chemicals. But they sell a whole kit of this, and in the kit there's going to be the bluing, and there's going to be oil, and there's going to be degreaser. I don't believe you need all of that, but of course they're going to recommend that you use it, but that's, that's up to you. But uh, otherwise, use some other kind of degreaser and, uh, and detergents to clean the work thoroughly after it's been polished. And then just some uh, isopropyl uh, rubbing alcohol will clean it nicely. And then uh, gun oil or 3-in-1 or something for your final finish. Also, it's handy to have uh, cotton swabs. And I borrow this stuff from my wife. She doesn't know about it. Cotton balls. Q-tips or whatever Walgreens calls them, or a swab. I like these swabs. Uh, I've had this in stock. I don't know where you get them, but they're, I know they sell them at Tandy's Leather Store. If they still have a Tandy's Leather Store, I don't know, but I think that's where that came from. And some clean rags, and, and it would be nice if you worked uh, on some cardboard or something you can throw away, or newspaper. So let's get started on this. I'll show you what else I got out here. This is just a jar of clean water. This is a test tube, or whatever you call it, from a chemistry lab, and I put some bluing in there so I can try dipping the threads rather than swabbing them. This is uh, bluing in here, and do not return any of these uh, chemicals to the bottle because they will be contaminated, and this is alcohol. i got to tell a story first, though. You know, Permablue, of course, virtual cases will tell you to use all their products, but when I was a kid, we'd make model airplanes all the time. This was probably in the early 50s, and they were balsa wood yet, but on the directions, they cost a dime. And then the glue was a dime, but on the directions, it said, use tester's glue for best results. Well, my dad came home with some other brand, and, and I'm there, Mom, Mom, I, I can't use this. Dad got the wrong kind. And I said, why? He said, well, it says you got to use testers. And Mom said, no, no, no. It doesn't matter what kind you use. They're just trying to sell and, and uh, scam you. So, uh, you know, I learned a, a valuable lesson back then. Okay. As long as you use quality products. Now, I polished these in the other video. I think you remember that. With the... Uh, sandpaper and you can go back and look at that. I'm not going to talk about that, but you don't, you want to have a polished clean project to start with. And then uh, you might want to scrub it with detergent and hot water and uh, then blow it off. And if you use hot water, it dries quickly. So that's a good advice. Now, I don't do this all that often. So that you and there's a lot of gun makers that watch this. So I'm sure you're going to find things I, that you disagree with. But, you know, this is my method. And uh, use whatever method works for you. So I've already washed, polished, degreased, and, and again I'm not a big polisher as you know. I just I don't like doing it so I don't spend a lot of time on it so that's good enough. And I'm going to clean it now with the alcohol and then I'm going to blow it off. But if you blow it off make darn sure that your compressor doesn't spit out um, a little bit of oil as some do or you're going to get blotches. So get that real clean. Now I'll go over and blow this off. And notice I got some way to hang on to it here just by putting a bolt into the thread. And once you've cleaned it, don't touch it with your bare hands because even if you think your hands are clean, they're not. They're oily from uh, human oil, not just the oil you may have picked up in the shop. Now using Q 
q-tips and this has been cleaned off and blown off again and uh, had to wait for my compressor to build up and boy I th I'll swear my compressor holds uh, its charge for about two minutes now a q-tip is kind of small uh, so depending on the size of your work you may want to use uh, what I told you here a swab I like that a little better it covers more area Now remember, this is a chemical reaction that's taking place, and this has been two or three minutes. And it probably would happen a little faster if I had warmed the work. Remember, any chemical reaction is uh, speeded up, sped up, made faster by heat, if you remember your chemistry, and I don't remember much of it. There, it's getting a rather nice black appearance, and it has to work for at least a minute or two, not, but not too long. And then we want to stop the reaction, and I'm going to do that by immersing it, and uh, in other words, rinsing it real good. And then, it's handy to have the water right here, and I'm not sure whether hot water is better or not. I haven't done all this much, but uh, look in the comments, and I'm going to let uh, gunsmiths comment on this, although they probably use uh, better chemicals than this, or they use the hot process, but we can't get into that. And, some of those old processes that you see on guns are a cyanide bluing that is absolutely gorgeous. And, uh, but we can't do that anymore because uh, all the men that did it at Winchester died. It's getting a rather nice black finish. Now you can do this repeatedly. But, but then you need to uh, use some triple O... Uh, steel wool between coats and it's rather laborious but I'm just doing one coat because it looks pretty dark I'm, I'm happy with that I'm gonna blow this off and then right away I'm gonna oil it and the oiling is really important just like you would oil a gun it's dried off and for best results use only sterret tool and instrument oil Rub that around real good, real well, I should say, because good is an adjective that should only be used to modify nouns, if you remember your freshman English or whatever it was. And Miss Evers, who could be quite mean. So I'm oiling it up real nice, and I'm going to wipe it off. But she had to be mean because there were so many mean kids in class. So she wasn't acting, she was reacting. Little blotchy on this side. I didn't work that side very well because it was underneath, as you remember, and I don't care about it anyway. But uh, what with the light and all here? I know, I know that's not going to show up, but it looks pretty nice. I must confess. Now, I believe I'll do that other piece off camera because it's strictly a repetition before I tackle the screws and I'm very leery about the screws because they are made of screw machine stock which contains lead and I'm just wondering if, uh, if it will take the bluing. I'm just finishing the second piece now make sure you get some way to hang on to this thing in this case I'm using that little threaded hole here with a 632 screw and on this little piece I dipped it both in the bluing and in the water. Now that's ready to dry off and, and oil. And uh, I'm going to stop the reaction on this if it'll fit, and it did fit. And that ought to set for about a minute. Now I'll tackle the screws. I'm simply going to dip the knurl in there and see what happens. Hmm, taking the black pretty well. Or should I say blue? You know, you can get this in brown color too, I think. And they make it for aluminum. 
I have not had too much luck with that, to be honest with you. And then for the screw, like I told you in this little graduated chemistry deal here, see what that'll do, if anything, without spilling too much of it. Wow, that was a stroke of genius, I must confess. It is, certainly works better than the, the swab. And you know, I scrubbed this with a fingernail brush, hot water, and uh, detergent for quite a while. Then I cleaned it with alcohol. And even before that, I cleaned it with some with brake cleaner or something the other day to try to get the oil off because there's so much oil on this piece. Now remember that this, these chemicals have to be thrown away and disposed of properly or the EPA will be very angry at you. So dispose of them properly. Dip that in a little bit and I want to let it uh, work at least a minute. That really worked better than uh, messing around with this swab, which I know would leave a little lint on it too. These, the Q-tips leave lint. This chemical process is not something that children should do, so make sure you're over 18 before you, you mess with any kind of chemical. And if you're a smoker, and I hope you're not, you know, it, wash your hands. You don't want to have anything on your hands and then, you know, get near your mouth. Wash four times before you eat. And then wear rubber gloves. But that's what it looks like when it's done. I got oil on it yet. Now, if you got a lot of blotchiness, that means you didn't have it clean enough. And there's a few blotches on here. This uh, little screw was plated, so I didn't do that. I suppose I could have tried to remove the plating, but that's good enough. I'll have to say those knurls really took it nicely. And that now don't go away. I'm going to show you one other little method to give uh, color by the by a heat method, basically to get the tempering colors, but it may be a, a temporary color. Now you can do this more than once, but don't oil it before you do that. In other words, repeated coats, I told you that a minute ago, and read the direction, and I think you can even go on to Birchwood Casey's uh, website maybe and get more detailed uh, instructions on how to work with bluing. So I hope you like that, but stick with me for just a few more minutes. Another way to achieve this uh, rather superficial color is, uh, is just by heating the work up and getting the tempering color. Now that's around 600 degrees, and I think you've all looked at these color charts and know what this color is all about, but by simply taking uh, shiny work, and it doesn't need, even need to be uh, oil free for this, and I'm just gonna put it on a hot plate. Now you could do it with a torch, but when you do it with a torch, it's hard to get it uniform. So I like this little laboratory plate that I'm using here. So let's take a look at that and talk a little bit about heats. I guarantee that absolutely nobody that's watching this uh, has ever seen one of these, but it's called a thermoplate. And, and it's really, uh, I guess, used in physics labs or chemistry labs. I don't know, even know where I got it. But since you don't have, and this can be heated up, and the temperature here is, uh, well, these are just arbitrary numbers, like one, two, three, four. It doesn't tell the, the temperature, but I have found by practice that I want this on about six and a half. And right now, it's hotter than a pistol. But you can do the same thing on your kitchen stove just with an aluminum or even a steel plate. But it'd be so nice to have uh, something uniform in, in temperature. Now, how do you get the right temperature? Well, have you ever seen... Uh, Temple sticks. Temple sticks are available in different temperatures, and when you uh, you touch it, it's almost like a crayon. When you touch the crayon there, it will liquefy when you're at that temperature. And this one is a 500, and there's a 450, and about a 550. So, looking at this to see about what the temperature is now with a 550, you see it melts very readily. This is available in liquids also and in any temperature you want, but maybe you never heard of these. So I'm about at the right temperature now, so let's give it a try with a sample piece first. Go to the uh, internet and look up 
tempering colors and you probably will find a color chart on that. It's most interesting, but you know, we're pretty hot here. We got some dancing spit. But the first color that starts to come in is what we call a straw color and it's just that. It's kind of a tan or a brown and then it'll, it'll work its way slowly into blue and I, I really need a little more heat here for this so I'm, I'm waiting for this but it's like waiting for water to boil but can you see the straw start to come in and these colors is what was uh, always used by by a heat treater years ago before they had modern instruments they could go by color and so that's been known for hundreds of years but do you see that the blue starting to come in just a little bit And this would be a good place for time-lapse photography. Now when it gets to the right color, and it probably won't be all that uniform, and there, I'm sure there's hot spots on this plate as well. Because there's coils in there, I, I think. But then I will, uh, there's the straw color with a little blue coming in. Then I will quench it. Now if you go over that heat and, and you have it on there too long, it's going to go back to the, just plain steel color and to me there's some beauty in this maybe you don't agree and you can do that with a torch I'm not getting the blue here yet and this video is getting way too long. That's kind of what I'm, I'm looking for on this other piece. Not too bad of a color. I'm going to quit right there and quench it. How's that? Now here's the clamp itself and this piece I just put on, this has been on for about two minutes and finally this this plate is up to about the temperature that I want and the, the colors came into the thin part much sooner than it came into the thick part and that's what I was trying to explain with the torch that it's, it's really hard to get it uniform. This color is only skin deep but then again so was the cold blue. I think I'll quit on that piece. At the risk of boring you, I'm going to let you watch this color come in also, but uh, just speed it up here if you don't go for this. You know, we live at such a fast-paced life, every, people want to speed everything up. Isn't that pretty? You can see how it got darker on this end first. Now I've got the screw laying on there. Whether or not that's going to do anything, I don't know. But it, it needs to conduct. And I was a little bit off of the uh, plate there so that the entire thread could conduct the heat up properly. All right. I'm going to take this off. And... Uh, I don't believe this even needs to quench. I think I'll let that cool naturally just to see what the difference is. Uh, using the plate to try to do the screws was quite a failure because this isn't uh, close enough to the plate. It's held up by both the neural and the thread. So I went with plan B here and I'm using the torch, but it's very hard to get it uniform. And why it didn't turn on the end there is a mystery to me, but this process is simply done with your burn dramatic and that piece is already preheated just a little bit from being on the plate and then I gave up. So from this experiment you can see that it works a lot better by conduction on the plate if the work is flat or square. Now this can be done in an oven and usually is a heat treater's oven but I do not have one of those. See the color coming in? Now 
Now that looks better than the other one that I just showed you. Well, I'll call it quits on that. This video ran about twice as long as I wanted as I'm becoming more and more verbose in my old age. But uh, let's take a look now. Here's the one done with the Birchwood Casey chemical and here's the one with uh, just the poor man's method of, of heating it up. And it isn't bad looking, is it? So you can do it either way if you ever get this far or have a notion or you just find this interesting. Now in a big factory they, they do the hot blowing and they have all different kinds of methods of coloring but they, then again they have a whole uh, laboratory and they've got a crew of chemists and, uh, and geniuses along that subject so that's not something that I can do at home other than this this simple method so I hope you enjoyed this make sure you watch the two other videos before this that show how I machine these and and this is uh, one was strictly uh, to, to finalize it so hope you liked it uh, watch my many other videos this is Tubal Kane saying so long for now and please subscribe thank you for watching